Mizuma TV back in the building, man. What's going on, y'all? Shout out to Mizuma Nation. Shout out to the Mizuma Mob. We in the building, man. I hope everybody had a blessed, beautiful, positive, productive day. Hope y'all enjoying y'all weekend, man. I'm on my way to go kick it with my son. Um, we on the road to 1K, man. We almost there. I believe we about to hit 980. So we just need 21 more. You know what I'm saying? To get that motherfucking job done, man. Shout out to the nation. Shout out to the mob for making this possible. Y'all love. Y'all support has been unmatched, man. I'm extremely blessed and thankful. But what I want to talk about today, man, is the whole rumor around the David Benavidez and Demetrius Andre undercard, man. They had their uh, press conference yesterday. It was just Demetrius Andre uh, and Benavidez up on stage talking to each other, talking about the fight, answering questions from the media. And um, they the media was kind of disrespectful in a way man like i know they're not doing it like purposely they just trying to get their their questions off so they could go back and um get their views on their websites and their videos and shit like that but i felt like the majority of the press conference they were just talking about the possibility of fighting canelo and just questions revolving around canelo when these two are fighting each other you know what i mean i understand like canelo is the the one of the stars in boxing and um, he's in their weight division, so um, and they both been avid about fighting Canelo. So it, I understand what they're trying to do, but at the end of the day, if they fighting each other, you know, it's a great fight. Why don't y'all just ask them questions about themselves or each other? You know what I mean? I, I think I would have asked a, a lot better questions that they probably would have appealed to a lot better. But regardless, that's besides the point. Um, there's been rumors going around on exactly who's going to be on the undercard, um, and for one. And for one, they have just confirmed from what I saw, from what I saw, that Subrail Matias is going to be on their undercard fighting Ergashev. You know what I mean? Ergashev, I believe, was uh, Subrail's mandatory, and they've been talking about it for a while. And supposedly the fight was already done. They in camp, they train, and they getting their shit in, ready to def uh, to attempt to defeat each other come November 25th now. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they ever had a date locked in. Um, so that's a great fight to add on that card, man. If you guys, I watched Ergashev fight on Showbox one time against Mike Fox, who's a tall 140 pounder. And um, he could, he he did what he had to do to dismantle um, Mike Fox. You know what I'm saying? It was a competitive fight, but Ergashev is extremely aggressive, has good pop, um, rough when he needs to be, come forward fighter. You know what I'm saying? Just, he reminds me of like a, like a Ruslan Provotnikov. You know what I mean? So imagine that style um, in terms of like his relentlessness. And like his, his determination to try to be the, the the aggressor in the fight, man. That's how Ergashev. That that was that was my first impression of him. I haven't seen much of him since then, but um, you already know what Subriel is coming with, man. He's not somebody who's gonna sit there and try to outbox you or anything like that. He's coming. He's walking forward with his hands up. He's letting his hands go, and he's getting stronger as the rounds go on. And he looks to punish you. He looks to break you. You know what I'm saying? We've been seeing that in his latest performances. Um, <clears throat> so that, that stylistic matchup is going to be a bloodbath, man. That's going to be a war for sure. And, um, according to Dave Benavidez, he, he, he let the cat slip out the bag a little bit. Um, he's saying that Jerron Ennis is going to be on the undercard. You know what I mean? So that's, if he's able to get Subriel and Jerron Ennis on the same undercard, which they've shared a card before, so it's not unrealistic. You know what I mean? Uh, Boots fought in Atlantic City. And Subrail was on his undercard. You know what I'm saying? Right before he got the IBF title. So it's definitely possible. So if he's able to achieve that, that you have a solid, solid co-main event in Jerron Ennis. Because I don't see Jerron Ennis being anything less than a co-main event. So I'm assuming that Subrail is going to be the opening fight on the pay-per-view. Jerron Ennis, the co-main. And then David Benavidez and Andre, that's the main event. It's an amazing fight, man. That's an amazing card. You know what I'm saying? And I put on the votes earlier whether uh, the people, the nation, the mob, whether they believe that this is a pay-per-view worthy fight. A lot of people seem to be leaning that it is a pay-per-view worthy fight. You know what I'm saying? There was a few people that, uh, there was somebody who left the comment and said that it's not a pay-per-view worthy fight at all. But I think when you really look at it, it has a strong case for being pay-per-view. Now, how much is going to be? Uh, that's a that's a different discussion. You know what I'm saying? It, it might be a little bit too pricey for a lot of people's liking, but regardless, I'm buying the fight. I'm supporting the fight because it's a great fight for boxing. And if you guys follow Mizuma TV, I'm always for the progression of boxing and what moves boxing forward to continue being the great sport that it is. 
You know what I'm saying? So I'm definitely supporting that fight. I'm putting my money up because uh, I gotta let these people know that I'm putting my bread up whenever I see a fight that I uh, that I uh, that I'm interested in. You know what I'm saying? That I feel is competitive. That I feel like is intriguing. You know what I mean? I feel like everybody should be doing the same. Even if you can't afford it, man, split it with a couple homies. If you split eighty dollars down the middle between three people, you, I mean, you're not gonna be paying that much. You know what I'm saying? That's less than thirty dollars that you cutting. You know what I mean? A little bit more than twenty five. You probably gonna be yeah, a little a little more than twenty five dollars you'll be paying if you split it between you and two homies. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> that's that's my thoughts on the situation, man. You know what I mean? It's a great undercard, bro. If they get this shit off, PBC, absolutely. They already dominated this year. They already dominated this year with what they've been doing, man. Especially that last card with Barrios and Ugas. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the fucking Erickson Lubas and Jesus Ramos uh, and the Canelos and the Jamels. Um, that was a great card. They come back with this one, man. They absolutely killing it, and they ended 2023 with a bang. And hopefully, they can keep that shit going in 2024. But that's the rumors that's going around, man. Apparently, Jerron Ennis and Subro Matias are going to be on the undercard of Demetrius Andre versus David Benavidez. Y'all, let me know what y'all think about this, man. Is this shit lit? Do you think it's slightly overrated? You don't believe it's pay per view? Do you believe it's pay per view? Y'all, let me know what y'all think in the comments below, man. That's what I got for today. I'm gonna be going live later on. Um, shout out to the mob, man. Shout out to the nation. I'm out, man. Peace.